Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating a key concept in econometrics that is the Tobit model, or the censored or truncated regression model. The motivation for this model being developed by famous James Tobin in the 1960s was the nature of many dependent variables that were used to run regressions. Tobin himself and many other researchers at the time were interested in how various exogenous variables, for example, income, influences consumption of various types of goods, for example, luxury goods or something like uh, travel expenses, things like that. And the common theme that um, brought all of these types of econometric estimations together is that theoretically your dependent variable could not be less than zero. You could not spend less than zero dollars on luxury goods. You could not spend less than zero dollars on travel expenses. And as loads of observations had their dependent variable truncated or censored as zero, many people in these samples did not spend anything on luxury goods, for example, if their income was relatively low, it presented an estimation problem for conventional regression techniques. And this is why Tobin proposed the Tobit model, which resolves that using a maximum likelihood approach. And today we're going to look at a more modern application of the Tobit model in finance that is concerned with dividend yields of stocks from the uh, New York Stock Exchange. As we all know, um, dividend payouts and dividend yields do depend on corporate earnings. However, a company cannot pay negative dividends. The lowest dividend yield that a stock can have is zero. And obviously, the company can pay loads in dividends if it has been successful and its earnings are very high. However, when the company's earnings or earnings yield is very negative, if the company has been experiencing notable financial difficulties during a particular year, as for example, this company that has an earnings yield of negative 300%, it cannot really put some of its burden onto the shareholders by paying negative dividends due to limited liability of common stock ownership, isn't it? So this is the censored or truncated dependent variable in action. And if we try to estimate the relationship between the dividend yield and the uh, earnings yield using simple OLS here, applying the Linus function and inputting dividend yield over here, our constant and earning yield over here, then specifying that we do not need the constant here as we have already got it separately in a separate column, and we do want the standard errors reported here, we can see that the uh, OLS regression would uh, put a very low coefficient on earnings uh, in terms of its role in uh, shaping the dividend yield. And that is due to the fact that the OLS regression does not want to penalize for excessively negative predictions corresponding to very negative uh, earning yields, for example, as here. But still, we can figure out our conventional t-stats, dividing the coefficients by the respective standard errors, as well as calculating the p-values, as far as we know the number of degrees of freedom um, for the model. To figure it out, we can count the number of observations, for example, the number of dividend yields we have got, it is 790. And then the number of the degrees of freedom, well, it's observations less two, as we've got two parameters, the intercept, the constant, and the earnings coefficient. We have got a pretty simple model here just to uh, have a proof of concept. And in terms of the p-value, we can use the two-tailed t-distribution, inputting the absolute value of the t-stat, alongside the number of the degrees of freedom over here that we can lock 
both columns and rows wise. We can see that the T stat is still um, statistically significant at 1%. It's in excess of 3, which is a very high and robust value. However, in terms of economic significance, it is not really there as this particular model predicts that a one percentage point increase in earnings yield would only increase dividends by less than a basis point, by fractions of a basis point. That is not really that realistic. And the peril of OLS is again the excessively negative um, observations that uh, OLS seeks to avoid in terms of their impact on the predicted value. So what does the Tobit model do? Uh, differently to the conventional or less prediction. So let's um, consider uh, the following. Let's compare the or less prediction that can be calculated quite easily. It's the intercept with a row locked plus the earnings coefficient times the earnings yield. And we'll see how um, small the difference in predicted dividend yields are. The stock with a very high earnings yield, for example, this one, is predicted to have a dividend yield not that much higher than a stock with a substantially negative earnings yield. For the Tobit model, the uh, concept is slightly different. Let's start with our OLS coefficients and input the logic of the Tobit truncated and censored regression. We'll input not just the prediction, but the maximum of the prediction. So intercept plus the earnings coefficient times the earnings yield over here. The maximum of this particular conventional prediction and zero. So we would truncate our prediction um, at the left. We'll truncate our prediction on the left by zero. And that's not the only truncation point that is possible. You can truncate your results from the left or from the right, or both, and you can truncate it at different values. The logic of the Tobit estimation would not change. The truncation strategy for Tobit estimation obviously depends quite a lot um, from your on your data set. Sometimes you have got uh, values capped at some uh, maximum value, or capped on the left-hand side at some um, minimum value. And here we have got, as in the conventional uh, derivation of the Tobit, uh, our dependent variable should be truncated on the left at the value of zero. So now let's figure out the error of the Tobit model, which is obviously just the difference between the actual observed dividend yield, observed dependent variable, and the predicted value of the dependent variable, the predicted dividend yield, and let's calculate the residual squared sum, knowing the error. So we can do sum squared of the errors, and we can calculate the square root of our residual squared sum over the degrees of freedom that we have already calculated quite a long time ago. We'll have a standard error of 2.46 approximately. And now we can uh, calculate the covariance matrix for the Tobit estimation using uh, the conventional logic, selecting a two by two matrix as well. We have got um, two coefficients only and input our standard error squared, just as you do for your usual um, regression models, and then multiply it on the right by inverse matrix. That is the matrix multiplication result of transposed X. So the two columns with the constant and the earnings yield, and we multiply it on the right by the known transposed x. So the calculation of the covariance matrix, very similar to that of your usual uh, multiple regression. So we can enforce this formula, using Chin got to enter, and get the standard errors down the line. And we can already calculate them for the uh, earnings coefficient for the intercept. For the intercept, the standard error is the top uh, left, element and the earnings standard error is the bottom right element. And we can obviously calculate T stats and P values by just copying them over here and see that indeed the uh, values that correspond to the um, Tobit 
regression are to a fault similar so far to the OLS results, which is reassuring given the fact that we haven't optimized our coefficients yet. But how one might optimize the coefficients for the Tobit model? Well, Tobin proposed the following procedure that is based on a modified uh, maximum likelihood algorithm. For non-censored predictions over here, where your prediction is greater than zero, greater than the truncation limit, the um, censoring uh, interval, you have got your usual um, natural logarithm of the probability density function. We have got the uh, probability density function of the standard normal distribution evaluated at the error over the standard error of the model, and we have got one over the error of the model over here. As usual in maximum likelihood estimations, we have got those applied for gauge models, for probit and logit models, so nothing that fancy. However, if we are at the truncation limit over here, when uh, the predicted y is equal to zero, we input the cumulative distribution function instead of the probability density function. So this is why we have got the modified maximum likelihood estimation with a combination of probability density and cumulative distribution functions going into our log likelihood maximization. So let's input that. If our predicted value as per the Tobit model is greater than zero, well then it's a simple log likelihood that we all know and love. So one over the standard error that we've got over here, and we can lock the row, times the standard normal distribution of the uh, Zstat we need to input. So that would be our error that we've got over here over the standard error of the model that we have got over here. And we need to specify it is probability density and not cumulative distribution function. So we input zero over here. And then we close the parentheses and close the parentheses again. And now we need to input our cumulative distribution function in the log likelihood estimation when our uh, predicted topic value is at the truncation point, is at zero. So if the value is false, we input the natural logarithm of the standard normal distribution for the same value for error of the Tobit model at this particular point over the standard error calculated over here. But here we input one as we need the cumulative distribution function at the truncation point. As we have truncated it not at the point, but we have truncated it for the whole area of potential observations to the left hand side of the truncation. This is why the cumulative function is used here instead of the normal density function. This statistical intuition is quite easy to grasp, and this is why uh, the Tobit estimation has become so prominent. And now we can close the parentheses all the way through and input our log likelihood calculation throughout our sample. And now we can find our log likelihood as the sum of individual log likelihoods over here. And before we run solver finally, the final constraint that we need to impose on our Tobit estimation is that it is unbiased. So we can calculate the bias in this cell over here by just calculating the average of the errors we have got around here. That would make our estimation more robust and make it more interpretable in line with our initial baseline OLS estimation. And that would also prevent the estimation from skyrocketing the coefficients to extreme ups or extreme downs so that all of our predictions fall below the threshold. This is simply another robustness procedure that we can implement before running solver. So now we can go data solver and specify the task. We want to maximize our log likelihood that is specified in cell F797 by changing the variable cells with Tobit coefficients that are cells B and C804 subject to the following constraint. Our bias, which is in cell F798, needs to be equal to zero. The estimation needs to be unbiased. Then we untick the make unconstrained variables non-negative tick box, as we might uh, expect some of the coefficients to be negative in the Tobit estimation, just as in the regular OLS estimation, there is no theoretical 
guideline against that. And we can stick with gradient descent, GRG nonlinear, and click solve. Now, the Tobit procedure has converged to optimal values of coefficients. What we can see here is that the coefficient on earnings has increased quite a lot in magnitude. It is approximately seven times greater than in the previous case, with a much higher and more significant t-stat in this regard. And that happens due to the fact that for observations with extreme negative earning yields, in this particular case, the estimation is not scared to assign uh, high values of the coefficient because those would be censored as zeros over here. And those would be indeed the correct predictions as per the raw data we have got on the left hand side. So this is how you can improve your estimation technique with censored data using the Tobit estimation of truncated regression with modified maximum likelihood. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm going to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.